Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock. Colin Coward is still out on vacation. So I'm joined today by Mark Slareth, Eric Davis, and Jim Jackson. Let's start with Michael Vick, who joined us yesterday and had some advice for Colin Kaepernick that damn near broke the internet. First thing we got to get Colin to do is cut his hair. You know, I mean, <laughs> listen, I'm not up here to try to be politically correct, but, you know, even if he puts cornrows in it, I, I don't think he should represent himself, you know, in that way in terms of, you know, just the hairstyle. Just go clean cut. You know, why not? You know, you're already dealing with a lot, a lot of controversy surrounding this issue. After getting crushed on social media, Vic tried to walk back his comments this morning, tweeting, quote, Colin Kaepernick's hair has nothing to do with him not being an, on an NFL roster right now. Let's be clear here. I wish only the best for Colin. I stand by what I've said about him being signed at some point this season to help an NFL club. I think he is a great kid who has a bright future, and I'm looking forward to seeing him on the field again. Trust and believe what I said was not in malice. I don't have an issue with what Michael Vick said at all. I don't think he needed to issue a clarification. I think if anybody watched his comments in context, he was very clear. He thinks Colin Kaepernick's not in the league because his play the past two years is not that good. He thinks that Colin Kaepernick should exhaust every avenue to clean up his image. And I, I have no problem with that. That's the advice my father gave me. That's advice my big brother would give me. He didn't say anything that controversial. I, it's not a question of it being controversial. What he said was his truth. Uh, that's what worked for him. So Mike Vick was in a situation where he had to change his image to get himself in the league. That's what he felt and it's what he believes that got him back in the league. So that's what he's telling Colin Kaepernick to do. And like I, yesterday, we let Mike talk, but I said yesterday, that's not the reason why he's not in the league. Changing his haircut, cutting his hair. There are guys on every NFL roster that have cornrows, that have um, that have they afros, aren't involved that have in worldwide controversies that, that have driven but the league it's the not, entire but offseason. It's not about his look, his reasoning for not being in the league. Michael Vick very clear on that. He said it's about his play. It's not about his play. It's not simply about but his again, play. That's Mike Vick's opinion. I get no, that. No, well, no, and, and I'm giving you, right, I'm giving you my, right now. I'm giving you my opinion. It's There's not about no his play. There's no issue with what Vic said, in my opinion. Well, I, I wish Mike would have stayed with it in the fact that he's saying that for me in my career, I had to change my outlook and how people look at, looked at me and saw me. Now, with Colin, you talked about the play aspect of it too. When Michael went away, he could still play, so it was still a glimmer of hope with Mike coming back sure. that he would be the old Mike. With Colin, you got a chance to see him on the field and not producing. So how does that look in regards to an organization saying we want to bring him back? And I'm going to say something this about the look, the cornrows, and how people are perceived. No, no, the afro. What, he said what, the cornrows was fine, though. But, but I'm did. talking about perception. Yep. With the cornrows, is fine. But when Allen Iverson came in the league, he had a swag about him. It was a little bit different. With Kawhi Leonard, who brings it in, you don't even equate the same, the two the same. Because they're two different personalities. You see what I'm saying? In regards to cleaning up your act, so to speak, and how you view people. So Colin has a lot more to do with his play than anything else. I, I, I couldn't care less what his hair looks like. You know, the bottom line is the tape tells me that he's going to struggle from the mm -hmm. pocket. That's what the tape tells me. What I'd love to see, if we're on the path of saying you want to clean up your image, I would love to see him articulate his position because he is a smart kid. He's Allegedly. a well-spoken kid. I'd Allegedly. love to see him come out and say, hey, man, this is where I stand. Because I will tell you this. You know, a couple years ago, Michael Jordan donated $2 million to social injustice yeah. causes. You know what that was? It was a 24-second reader in the 24-hour news cycle. That's what it was. Blip, boy, isn't that nice? Michael Jordan donated this money. Let's move on. And I'm not bashing Michael Jordan because that's a great thing that he did. And Colin Kaepernick has, has donated a boatload of money. But I just think that if he came out and articulated his position, it would help him with some of the franchises that are afraid of, this is not a black-white issue, it's a black-red issue. I, I wanna, afraid this, of I, losing I, I, money. This, this, Mark, Mark, this. I want to get you back on the okay, square, though, please a little do. bit. You're a dad. You have a son who's an athlete. You give your kids no advice about appearance and I you know, how you present I, All the yourself. time, I tell my kid, Clean your clean it up, man. All the time, like Tell cut him. your yeah. hair, clean up okay, your beard. Okay, hold on. One more thing, Eric. One more thing. Uh, we all keep coming from this place that Mike Vick allegedly, and there's no proof of it, that he was saying, "Colin, this is what I had to do, so therefore you do it." 
I don't, you can remove that because he didn't say that. What he said was, he was looking at the dude with this big afro, and it's like, you know what? You know he needs to start with his, with his hair and cut his hair. Present yourself I sat right better. Next to him. I sat right I next to him when he said, this was advice that was given to me. So he's giving that advice was that was given to up. him. That was but, in the follow-up question. He's saying, but he's saying, this is what works through me. That's what I, I get. That's what worked. But I, I'm, I will firmly stand on the fact that his haircut has nothing to do with it. It's a combination of all the things that are happening. Sure. Part of it is, is his play, but no we question. cannot put it on his play. And what everyone always wants to go to, and I'm gonna say this quickly, everyone always wants to go through, he has a play in a certain system, okay? And there are only a few systems he can play in. Well, there are a whole lot of quarterbacks that have proven that they can't play in any system, and they still have jobs. So it's more to it than just and, his haircut. And, and listen, or if his you play. take on the burden that he took on, there's some extra burdens that's going to be placed mm -hmm. on you. Right. So Mark Sanchez is not out the face of a polarizing issue. And whether we like it or not, it's a polarizing issue. Mark Sanchez didn't wear socks with pigs on them. So the rules are different. You can go to a fast food restaurant and no one's going to bat an eye or think, oh my God. If I go, people are like, man, you overweight. That's a problem. You need to stop block. The rules are different for Colin Kaepernick. He has, won't come out and say, I want to be a starter, or I'll accept being a backup. I'll accept the NFL minimum. We don't know. His rules are different than Blake Bortles and Ryan Fitzpatrick and everybody else because of the decisions he made. My decisions about what I eat after this show are different because of the decisions I made. So Understood. we need to quit analogizing him to every other quarterback and every other position and every other player that he put himself in a different spot. Okay, okay. And Michael Vick is just sitting there like most people with common sense, a bunch of people I know, a bunch of black people who don't care nothing about white people have given me similar advice. Hey, man, clean up your image. So my father so, so never liked hair. me so in cutting, the So cutting his hair, so if he comes in and it's he's clean advice. cut and in a suit, that's gonna get him a job? It doesn't no. guarantee him a job. But that's not what Mike Vick said. He, but, but you know what, though? I do, I do believe for the corporate structure who looks sure. at college, yeah. they're gonna look at him and say, is he turning the corner somewhat attitude-wise? Is it going to ensure the job? Is right. it going? No, this is what I'm saying. The NFL, it, the, the, the is NFL. It, hold up, but, but is it going to ensure? It may take one organization yeah. that sees Colin comes in. I'm not saying when my son was younger, I told him I said, "Listen, you got an issue here. Consequences. Whatever you choose to do, you got to deal with." Move. And that's what I'm saying. We're already into this. Lost <laughs> in the outrage over Vic's hairstyle advice was any meaningful discussion of what. He should actually, what he actually said, which was simply, Kaepernick should exhaust every angle in improving his image, including changing his hairstyle. I think this is good advice, and Kaepernick should take it. I think it's advice that young people are given all the time. You go in for a job interview, you want to present the right image. When you're involved in a bunch of controversy and people have, well, what's he into? Is he more into the activism than playing football? And I'm just sorry, when they sign contracts that pay you millions of dollars, they want you to be all in, and particularly at the quarterback position. And this guy doesn't remotely look all in. Uh, guys have a lot of different interests, and you can't tell me just because a guy cares about some aspect of something that's happening in the world that he can't be all in on his job. Every last one of us are all in on our jobs that we do right now, but we have other outside interests. So you can do that as a player. I'm sitting here with two other players. You know that you can be focused on your job and still care about other aspects of your life. So that's, that's part of it. And now the other thing, as far as the image, the league has already shown they're okay with that image. They are okay with afros. They are okay with cornrows. They are okay with dreads. It's already there on every single team. No so, so there's no reason for me to believe that him cutting his hair is but going to get him back. a job. Should Kaepernick change his image to get back into the NFL? Well, if he wants to get back in, that's a, I, 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 I'll, I'll take it back to this. My question has always been this, and maybe you can help me out with this. If we're talking about the Colin Kaepernick at the beginning when they went to the NFC Championship and went to the Super Bowl, would he have taken this kind of stance if he was still the Colin Kaepernick of old? Right. He had time because he didn't play, his mind was elsewhere, to do this. So I go back, is this the same guy or is it somebody different? And will he do it? Will he stay? Will he change? I don't think he's going to change in regards to his stance and to, just to get back in to the NFL. Perception becomes reality. And if the perception is 
that this guy could be a distraction, that scares NFL teams. And let me just tell you something. He walks in the locker room, I bet you a dime to a dollar that he's not a distraction. Personal, yeah, individual. Yes, 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 of course. But, but you know what's the distraction? Colin Kaepernick in the stance becomes the distraction. Mm -hmm. So every guy in that locker room, 53 guys, well, you know how this works. Yes, every ask, guy. Hey, what did you guys. think? How's, how's Colin behaving? Is he studying? Is he preparing? Do you think he can make this transition? Like, I'm like, I don't even care. Can he play or can he not play? That's all I care about. And I'm trying to do my job and make, I'm trying to make my living. And so those are the issues that you get into. It's the totality of the action that's keeping him out of the, the it's the lack of playing from the pocket. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of the system stuff. The, it, is, it is the fact that he took a stance, you know, and I, and I bumped into a guy in the airport. I bumped into a guy that served three tours of duty in Afghanistan. You know what he told me? I fought to, for the freedoms of this country so he has the right to protest. He goes, I also fought so the owners could say, I don't feel like hiring you. Uh, it works both ways. And exactly. So, right? <laughs> which, which has always been right. my stance, 100%. I've, I've said that the owners kick guys out. It's not like, and that's why we got to stop talking about corporate America. The NFL is not corporate. The NFL can do things that corporate America can't do. They can, they can fire you because you're overweight. They can fire you because they, just, they don't like the way you look. They can fire you because whatever reason they want to, it's not a regular job. And all I'm saying, you are absolutely correct. It's the totality of all of these issues. So let's not right. act like a haircut will change that and, issue. And let's, let's not, not act, act like, like... And let's not act like he's being blackballed, like there's collusion, like the owners will get, hey, I'm not going to hire him. Are you going to hire him? No way. Let's not hire him. Let's get together. Move, Nobody's doing that. We move into reality just for a moment. And let's not pretend like employers in the NFL and every other employer don't evaluate the total person. What are they doing on social media? What are they into? What is their real passion? People do, particularly at the income level, when they invite you into the 1%, there's like some stuff, some pledge and some things you have to do to say, we're going to let you into this club. And when you can't, when your play dissipates in the NFL, mm -hmm. the rules yes. start getting harder and harder to stay in that 1% club. Yeah, agreed. And so if Colin, what Michael Vick is saying, what I'm saying, and people that actually want to see Colin Kaepernick get back in the league, because I actually do. I would like to see the guy get the money, play in this league, and spend his money promoting the causes he's interested in. We're trying to give him some advice on how to get back in the club. Everybody else, to me, is trying to give some advice on how they can be popular over social media and be the most black person on social media. And again, we all know that, I, I always go back to my father, and I, people get tired of it. Blackest dude I know gave me all this advice that we somehow think is toxic for Colin Kaepernick. Man, get that earring out of your ear. Put a suit on, Jason. I, Cut your hair. And this dude, I'm, ain't nobody blacker than my father. And so it's just good advice. And I get tired of this thing. When we give young black people good advice, people get demonized. I, I will I, say I, this. All you have to do is look at this picture right here. Two of those guys still have jobs. They're all taking a stance in solidarity together with Colin Kaepernick. And the bottom line is two of those guys are real good players. Two of those guys were, you know what, and right. two of those guys, you just said it, because their level of play was to a point to where it's not an issue. That's, right. that's the thing. Uh, and that's all I'm saying about this. I've had to make some changes to get some jobs. I have. Right. We all have. And if you live long enough, it, it's a, it's a good agree, problem. Actually. I agree. I agree. But we're having different arguments. My, right. my argument is that changing his image is not going to get him a job because it's beyond that now. It could help the process. It might only be 5% of the solution, but it starts somewhere. It's like me. It's like if I have a good eating day today, it ain't going to fix my problem, but it's a start. And you got to start somewhere, and that's all Michael Vick was saying. All right, welcome back to the show. Jim Jackson is still here, and we're joined now by Chris Broussard and Doug Gottlieb. Let's move to the Lakers, who won the Summer League Championship last night in Las Vegas. Lakers star rookie Lonzo Ball was awarded league MVP. Despite not playing in the final game because of a calf injury, there's been nonstop hype around Lonzo for months, but I don't think this award validates it the hype or Alonzo at all. Listen, I, I think he played very well. And so he's, he's been impressive. The, the Kyle Kuzma was the best player in the championship game, their leading scorer throughout the deal. I, I felt like he should have been MVP. That's no slight 
on Lonzo. I, I think they gave him the hype because he's the reason why the sta the stadiums or the arenas filled, mm -hmm. the ratings are up, and why we're all paying attention. So maybe in that regard, was he was like one the of those MVP. LeBron James MVPs. Like LeBron drives the league, he yeah. brings in all the fans. Yeah, he's yeah. really the MVP. But it, Kuzma outplayed him, and but again, I gotta get Lonzo exceeded my expectations. I think he validated. I mean, look, validation will only come in the NBA. If he goes out and struggles yep. his rookie year, he won't validate it no matter what he did in summer league. But I, I loved what he did. Obviously, everything he did was transferable. I've said that before to the next level, the vision, mm -hmm. the passing ahead, the contagious nature of his unselfish play, how he got all his teammates excited about playing with him. And more than anything, you saw he's a winner. All right, in high school, undefeated his senior year with his two younger brothers on his team. They beat basketball powerhouses, modern day and all these other teams. He goes to UCLA, 15 and 17 before he gets there, 31 and 5 when he's there. Now, you go to the Lakers, you happen to win the summer league. I mean, this dude seed. is a winner. <laughs> he's a winner. <laughs> but you, you, I, I look at it from not the 30,000 foot level, from the micro level, short term. Lonzo Ball, LeVar Ball, what they said with well, LeVar is that my son, my son can change the culture. He makes players better. We saw that in the summer league. From an organization perspective, this is something that Magic and Rob Palenka can push out in regards to their marketing. Talking about selling season tickets, getting people involved, the fanfare, because they have something special. We haven't seen a rookie come into the Lakers with this much promise and hype since Magic. So they have something to push. And if you're the fan oh. base... Well, Kobe, but he didn't have he the didn't expectations have the yeah, right. and the hype that um, Lonzo has no, coming in. he didn't in. have the hype. He didn't, he didn't have, have that. Hype. Now, as a fan base, now you have the fan base energized. Now, whether it's the summer league or not, it doesn't matter. These people are coming out, and also, when they go on the road, now the fans and those 29 other teams, you can market Lonzo Ball if he continues to play that way. So on a micro level, it gives the Lakers what they're looking for, which is instant credibility. What they do with it is yet to be seen. Kyle Kuzma obviously had a, had a breakthrough summer league. I mean, that was exceeded even their expectations. He was the most productive, but he wasn't the most valuable, right? Lonzo Ball they won was... a championship game without I, I, Lonzo. I, no, I, I understand, but, but <laughs> I mean... With Kyle so, 30 so look, <laughs> we... I just, got, uh, I just got off a of plane coaching in Israel. And one of the things I learned, which is a coaching virtue, which is true, mm -hmm. is you are a reflection, not as much as your coach, as your best player. And when your best player is your most unselfish player, that became a, in NBA basketball, I talk about one more. They became a one more team. Mm -hmm. Ball swung around That's to the right. wing, you're open, you got a good shot, guy in the corner's got a great shot. Everybody's yelling one more. And when it just naturally becomes a one more, everybody mm -hmm. moves the ball team, it, it's like the flu, it spreads through your team. Your best player is selfish, your team becomes. Look, summer league basketball is generally, generally about everybody trying Trying to, to show that they can get buckets. Get That's because right. That's how you get money. Yep. And this Lakers team, was remarkably unselfish. And remember, they did it without Brandon Ingram, who they wanted to build, they want to rebuild around Zoe and Ingram. Ingram goes down with a cramp in the first, first game. They shut him down. Lonzo was terrible and super tight in the first game. He improved. I agree with you. Kuzma had the most productive, but Lonzo Ball showed why there's hype and lived up to, in many ways to the hype and showed why he can, in fact, change the culture and make them a one more team as opposed to the selfish young team, immature team that they've been over the past couple Chris of years. Chris made this point yesterday. I want to hear you two guys, the point guard, off guard in the NBA. Chris made this point yesterday about Lonzo and just how quickly he moves the ball. Mm -hmm. And that's culture changing for the entire NBA. Have you ever seen a guy, a, a, a point guard who controls the game by moving the ball as quickly without a dribble as this guy? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the best ones do. I think Nash did, although Nash... Uh, he dominated. Nash, he uh, over dribbled. He, he did at times. Chris but, Paul over dribbles. Well, I think, I think you're going to see his change. Jason, 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 Jason Kidd did. That's why I say I, he reminds me of Kidd. The, the thing that he's always been a great advance passer, mm -hmm. and what you find when you're a point guard, and something that I, I had a great gift of doing is guys run harder, they find their spots, right. they just get a, they, they get supercharged and excited about playing with you because you know you're going to find them and get it to them. He not just throws it to them, he gets it to them in their rhythm. Um, well, look, when we grew up, you were taught to you. Nobody over dribbled for the most part. Yeah, I mean, even the best ball up. handlers, you move the ball pretty quickly. That's how we were taught. I think this has been an era where the best point guards dribble. Kyrie, 
Damian Lillard. They all not, over those guys really Honestly, they're not really point guards. Well, I mean, that's the NBA. They play point guard in the NBA. I, I, I understand. I but think like, he's a throwback, and he's going to shift the culture a little bit. Uh, agreed, but it also depends upon what, you, like, what your skill set is. I mean, like, look, the thing he has to improve on is his ability to score when he gets to the rim, when he gets in there. Well, mid-range more so. Yeah. But, but, but even when he gets in there, just because you have to – all that passing is for not if you can't make somebody help. Right, because they have to help in order for you. Otherwise, you're passing to a guarded man, no matter how good a passer you are. But I, I look, I agree with you guys. He throws it up, and those guys, as soon as the ball, they get the rebound, those guys start running like, damn, I'm going to get points. And so you become a little bit more, you become selfish, even in an unselfish way, in that you're running the lane, you open up the floor. Well, and I, and I give a lot of credit to Lavar. You know, I, like I've said before, don't get the messenger confused with the message. Yeah. He taught his young man how to play the game the right way, which is when somebody's open. The game of basketball is simple. As basketball players, a lot of times you make it more difficult. If you're open, you shoot it. Right. If somebody's open, you pass it. If the ball comes off the rim, you go rebound. The thing I love about Lonzo is he doesn't have to be ball dominant and say the offense has to just go through me. I'm, I'm willing to give it up, and then you make a play. If you don't make a play, give it back, and then I'll run the offense. That's something that's instinctual, but it's also something that's been taught since he's been a young kid. But that's the part about... Go. Go. Cleveland where the Cavs have had a bumpy offseason. Now, reportedly, LeBron James is frustrated with Dan Gilbert and the team's offseason reports since firing David Griffin. But LeBron himself hasn't been engaged in the free agent recruiting as he usually is, and I think he's more to blame than even Dan Gilbert. I blame <laughs> Kevin Durant and the Warriors most for people <laughs> perceiving Cleveland's had a bad offseason. That's true. Yeah. Because Very true. No one could anticipate the Kevin Durant move and what it would do to basketball. How do you plan for that? How do you pivot off of that? He's already spending $210 million in luxury tax and salaries, highest paid roster, Dan Gilbert. And so I blame KD and the Warriors first, and then I blame LeBron James because Dan Gilbert's all in, and, and, and this is the team LeBron constructed. Well, the USA Today article said LeBron recruited Jamal Crawford. So when we talk about an offseason, first of all, it hasn't been bumpy. They still have more talent than anybody in the league except Golden State. They're a great team. You have the best player in the world and two perennial all-stars and a nice supporting cast around them. So they haven't had a bad offseason roster-wise. But the reason anything that's gone wrong has been Dan Gilbert's fault. I mean, firing your – firing, you know, or releasing him, whatever you want to call it, David Griffin – right before the draft and free agency is not a good look. Whether you like David Griffin or not, it just doesn't make sense. Speaking with Chauncey Billups for two weeks and nobody else and then lowballing him and not sealing the deal is Dan Gilbert's fault. So I'm with – it hasn't been terrible. I want to put the onus on LeBron and the other players and the coaching staff to say, look, we just got to get better. When Magic would lose the bird, it wasn't – always, let's just go get somebody else. It was, what can we do to get better? When Michael Jordan lost to the Pistons every year, it was, how can I get better? But, but get in know, the post. But get, you know you know, the difference is, though, Chris? They're going to dominate in the East. They, they can't physically get better to guard Durant. That's the issue. I don't care. Now, the way this team is constructed... So they have nothing they can do... What, to, to guard Durant. To, okay, but the, what about uh, to beat Golden no, State? You, you, have, you, you have to be able to guard Durant. And they can't do that because the way this team was constructed, LeBron James can't guard he can't Durant. not for not for no. 35, 38, 40 because minutes. Because of his age. Because his age, he can't. Well, because he's also not a guard. He doesn't no. like. But, like, but he, he doesn't, he doesn't he, defend on the perimeter. He can't just. He can't. Well, he has in the past. Not, not really. No, he can't. Not, 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 not really. He can't, he can't extend that amount of energy for 38 minutes. He can't. When you go get Shannon Fry, when you go get Kyle Korver, what you're saying is we're going to be spot up shooters. Yeah. You don't have defense. You're going to be a defensive liability. Who do you put on Durant? That's that's the guy you need to take out. And you didn't improve in that area at all so far. Something can happen down the line before the trade deadline. But if you want to beat Golden State, you better get somebody in there on the perimeter that can at least bother what, what, Kevin what are Durant. They, what are they handicapped by? When the Tristan Thompson deal came down, did you think it was too much money? Yeah. Okay, when the J.R. Smith deal was done, did you yeah. think it was too much money? Yeah. I mean, those are both Rich Paul. That's both LeBron James guys. There was never any... Mm -hmm. there, well, was, there was never... Hold, hold, well, LeBron's look, see, not in negotiate I, with them. Yes, okay, fine. But if LeBron says, yo, we got to get this done, you got to take a little less so we can get another dude. You got to have that foresight. 
and he either didn't have the foresight to understand the possibility of other teams loading up against him, or his ego wasn't in, in place, to which it doesn't matter what anybody does. It's me and my dogs, and we're going to win. Whatever it was, he, he could have taken a leadership role and said, I'm going to take a little less, you're going to take a little less. JR, you're going to take $10 million, and we're going to always have change. He could have But he done didn't it. do that. He done and it. so I agree with you that, look, Dan Gilbert is to blame. Yeah. Um, the, the Warriors and trying to keep up with the Joneses is to blame, but LeBron James also has to accept some of the blame and accept some of the fact that you've never heard from him, I can't guard Durant. I haven't guard Durant, right? He's the greatest player. Why can't he guard the dude at his same spot? Well, that guy was saying. better than him. Put him on Durant. He huh? He's going to have to try. He can't guard him. He cannot guard him. Nobody can guard him. Nobody can guard Durant. But here's my thing. LeBron you, you, James can guard whoever you, he wants. If he, he can if guard he, him, but he's not going to shut he's, him he's down. One-on-one, he, you, you, on one, you know this. You can't shut down a exactly. player. You just can't do well, you, the, it. But, that's, that's why but, he went to Golden State but, but, is because you can't help. But, but what you can do is, is bother him enough that gives you a chance. But you need that player. You need that player that's a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, that can bother Durant. Through a course of seven you don't games, think Jared Lucas, not, not through stopping. seven games, because he's not going to be committed. Of the age. I, I, just, I just don't think he's going to be committed to expend that amount of energy I, for seven it's, games. It's not just That's the age. only issue. He's never been a perimeter defender. He's built I like a match. I watched him guard Derrick Rose for a quarter. For a now, quarter, I know that was great. Quarter, but that was great. Derrick Rose is a quarter. point guard. Derrick Rose can't only, shoot. I'm talking about for seven games. And Derrick Rose can't shoot. Derrick Rose can't shoot. But hold on, guys. I get what you're. I'm not saying he's in lockdown point guards for four quarters, but he has been able to guard his position throughout his career. And his position is a perimeter position. But he you can't tell he me he can't guard threes. I agree with Chris here. Well, look, I think he's a, he's a very good he help side defender. I he's said he won't at this okay. point of this okay. I didn't say I, he can't. I, 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 I think he can't. But everybody made excellent points. Good. I want to I say this in defense of Tristan Thompson in that contract. <laughs> when you're dating a Kardashian, you don't take pay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Mark Slayer, uh, Doug Gottlieb, and Eric Davis are back. <laughs> Let's move to Washington, where the Redskins hit Kirk Cousins with the franchise tag for the second straight year after failing to agree on a long-term deal. Redskins president Bruce Allen says the team offered Cousins more than $50 million guaranteed, which is a lot of money, especially since Allen doesn't even know Cousins' first name. After discussions with Kirk... Kurt is obviously an important part of our organization. Our goal was to sign Kurt to a long-term contract. We made Kurt an offer. We have not received any offer from Kurt's agent. Kurt has made it clear to me that he prefers to play on a year-to-year -year basis. All right, despite not knowing Kirk's name, I don't have a real issue with the Redskins taking a pass on Kirk Cousins. I'm not sold on the guy. I don't think he's a franchise quarterback. I'd make him Kyle Shanahan's problem out in San Francisco, let him try to turn him into Matt Ryan, which he is not. Uh, well, they told Kirk uh, a while back that he was not their guy. Uh, when they franchised him, when they didn't give him a deal early on, I, I, I'm, I'm on record saying they never should have franchised him in the first place uh, because you made him this $20 million quarterback. And now the money that you're offering him makes no sense because why take the extra 20, what, $29 million over what you're about to make right now when you can get more than that on the free agent market next year? So he's already decided he's going to leave. Uh, so I don't know why they're trying to sugarcoat it that way. I feel like they're one of these guys that are driving around a parking lot looking for a better spot when just park the car, have a quarterback, it's too hard to find any level of competent starting quarterback in the NFL. I agree with you. He's not Matt Ryan, okay? You're he's a not, settler. He's huh? not, huh? You're a settler. You like, you'll settle. I, I think you Keep have to. Keep in mind, your wife's watching. Huh? My, <laughs> wife settled, my, my wife settled on me, right? right? Yeah. If she drove around Good the parking answer. lot looking for Good let's answer. just Let's just be honest with it. And, I, I mean, look, there is a, a blatant part of disrespect in not saying Kirk. His name is Kirk. Kirk. And Man. any... Look, you ain't old enough. I'm 50. You forget people's names. It, or just mispronounce It's them. on a piece of paper that he's reading, Jason. This is, this he's your quarterback. Wait, wait, wait. He's That's your guy you just offered $53 million You don't know his first name. Here's the, here's the problem. Here's what that bothers me about this, is that the narrative that you've created is, hey, we just offered him the greatest contract in franchise history. You're already guaranteed $24-plus yes. million right now. There you go. And, and you're actually saying... We're offering you 53. When if we franchise you again, we're going to pay you 58. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I take that? Why would I settle for 53? That contract is fake. And the fact that you go out and put it out there, that's slimy. 
That's smarmy. Yeah. It's the same thing they did to their, their general manager, Scott McLuhan, right? They fired him, and then you know what they came out and said? Well, it's not good enough to fire him. Let's go ahead and besmirch his name and say, hey, he's an alcoholic, and he's got a real alcohol problem. That's why we fired him. Yeah. You know what? You fire him, you let the guy go, and you hope that he gets better. I, I just hate the fact that you're going to throw this guy out there and act like you gave him a legit contract. Because what contract. you do to your fan base, you make your fan base look like he doesn't want to be here because he's turning down this right. money. But this, right, we talk about all the time about smart business. It's a smart business move for him to play on this franchise contract because if they do want him, as you said, he's going to make more money anyway. And if someone else wants him, he's a free agent and they can get him and not have to trade for and him. And it's a smart business move for them to sign him long term knowing Kyle Shanahan wants him. And worst case scenario, you pay him the same money up front right. and you give him a three-year deal and you can always trade him to San Francisco as the contract will be settled. I, I would settle. The Redskins have been driving around a parking lot looking for a starting quarterback since Joe Theismann broke his leg in half. And this guy is good yeah, enough. You just settle for someone who's good enough. If, if not, what are you going to do? At those prices. But what's your, what's your, what is but your option? You, here's, here's, you had an opportunity and this is the way the NFL works now. You've got to do a great job from a scouting department standpoint of saying that guy is here now. He's going to escalate to here. Yes. He completed 70% of his passes, almost 68 point something. Him. And they weren't ready to make that move. And you've got to be able to make that move early. Otherwise, if you wait till late, you're going to pay final above thought. premium. I got a final thought. Okay. He had two chances to put him in the playoffs against the Giants, and he came up empty on both drives. He's not worthy.